Maintaining your CEREC is critical for great restorations. You're looking at one of the original MCXLs. We've had this, I don't know, 2008, 2007, whenever it came out. And because we've maintained it so well, it is still a rock star in our office. I use, I've beat this thing up and it still does a great job for us. So uh, we're gonna go over a few guidelines for maintaining your CEREC system. On a daily basis, what you wanna do, especially with the milling chamber, is go in, uh, wipe it down. You want to make sure that it's not wet anywhere, but the, the most important thing on a daily basis is leaving the door open. You want this to evaporate and get dry. The reason for that is, is that we're dealing with organics and what will happen is it will start to get smelly. It just won't smell right. And it will, you know, it'll get mildew that's built up in here. So make sure you always have the door open. So literally taking a, a paper towel and wiping the inside of the door lightly so you're not getting all scratched or you can use a, a big gauze if you want. But make sure you get inside the milling chamber. Uh, there's usually a metal floorboard at the bottom. It usually says something like Serone at the bottom. Make sure you take that out, get up underneath it. It takes just a minute just so you're kind of drying it out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you do this every single day, it will uh, likely look good for many years. Another critical thing to keep in mind every time you use this milling chamber is how you open the door. So these doors are no notoriously crack on the back side and you'll know when this starts to happen because you'll start to see a tiny little pool of water or lubricant just behind the milling chamber and it looks like something's leaking from underneath it. It may not be leaking from the base of the MCXL, it's actually leaking from the back side of the door because you'll tend to get cracks. And this is how it happens. Somebody will open the door and it just flies open like that. Well, if you do it over and over and over and over again, it starts to crack. In fact, ours is already starting to crack. We probably should replace it, but if you looked really close at this, you'll see the cracking happening in the back. So the way you open a door properly is you always have the other hand to guide it. So as it opens, you can, you can let it release. Now on, the, uh, on our other milling chamber here, it has a more updated door to it. So when we open this, it doesn't fly back quite so far and there's more metal components within the, within the door. Again, you still should be in the habit of opening it and then guiding it open so it doesn't get the cracking in the back. It happens. Something else you should be doing on a daily basis is wiping down the Omnicam with alcohol just so there isn't any gunk or anything that's uh, collecting on it. So the, the first thing, uh, always make sure you're careful with how you're pulling this out. If you grab just a, a gauze that has a little bit of alcohol in it and, and wipe it down, don't scrub it in because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get just the little smudge marks off of that. And that'll happen because you touch with your fingers or with the, like a cavicide wipe. Some of that will stay across the lens, but lightly get that off. And then you don't want the alcohol to stay on here. So just take another dry gauze and lightly dry that off so the next day when you're going to use this it'll be it'll be ready to go another thing you should always be in the habit of doing is locking it in so whenever you pull it out of the mouth or you're doing something with it when it goes back into its holster make sure you lock it into place uh, it, the last thing you want to have happen is somebody walk by and catch the cord and it rip right out so this is a safety feature where Sarah, you should get in the habit of always locking it into place on a weekly basis, this should be right before you go home for the weekend, uh, you wanna take out the, the tank, drain it, open this up, drain it, rinse out any of the uh, residue in there. You can use like a toothbrush or a Q-tip to get down in there. I would say flush out the filter also and then let it dry out over the weekend. Don't, you don't have to fill it back up. You can just leave it open. But then on Monday morning, you're gonna maybe rinse it out again, make sure all the residue is out because it'll be dry at that point. 
then you're going to put in the proper amount of Dentatec, which is 75 milliliters, and then the rest filled up with uh, distilled water. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hand tighten this. If you get in the habit of really cranking this thing down and you're not cleaning this stuff out, a lot of the times the threads will get frozen and this can be a bear to get open if, you're, if you do more than hand tightening. So on a weekly basis, you definitely want to take the tank out and uh, rinse it out, get all the residue out and let it air dry over the weekend. And on Monday, you can uh, load it right back up. Every now and then you need to clean the trackball on the computer. Now, you may want to do this every month. Honestly, we do it every now and then when, we, when the trackball starts to feel gunked up. But it, it's unusual on how to clean this up. So first thing you're going to do is go over to the CERIC machine and you turn out this little circle, put that aside. And then the trackball, sometimes it can be kind of hard to grab into. Uh, don't take something to pry it out, but get somebody that can get their fingers in there and they can lift it out, okay? You're gonna take an alcohol gauze and just wipe that off, make sure there isn't any fingerprints and stuff like that. And then carefully, when you look down into the little socket here, you'll see a little clear area. In fact, you may even see the icon moving as you're cleaning this out, but there's little rollers in here and what happens is you get lint and like just uh, oils from your fingers get in those and then it starts to gunk it up and it's not quite as responsive. Put that trackball right back into place and then the, the uh, little circle will ha has threads to it and you're gonna tighten that up. Now, the next thing you should do is go run your cursor and see how it feels. If you've tightened it too much, you can back it off just a little bit and it will run faster and vice versa. If it's, if it's too light, you can tighten that down and it will feel much better with the cursor. About every six months, you're gonna to wanna to change the filter in the, in the tank. You don't have to do it every time you rinse out. That would, be, that would be very expensive. And those filters last a long time, especially if you're rinsing them out well. But about every six months, you wanna put a new filter in. Every year, Patterson's gonna come in and do its yearly service. Make sure you get that scheduled. They're gonna work on the MCXL and they're also gonna work on the Omnicam. Get that scheduled once a year. This is the basics when it comes to the maintenance of your CEREC system. Okay.